design of memories is one of the challenging areas we need to take extreme care while designing systems for um, ASIC as well as uh, FPGA implementations. And uh, so, as far as the memories are concerned, um, there are basically two types ROM and RAM and uh, organization of these uh, memories would depend upon the um, typical applications. And uh, often uh, the conventional memories that we use. Uh, having uh, either a, a single address, uh, single um, output um, uh, pattern or uh, a dual port uh, RAM etcetera uh, may not be of help for uh, typical applications that we are going to address here. And uh, uh, naturally this calls for um, uh, uh, tailor made uh, designs for uh, these applications and uh, one such application that you see is uh, uh, right here with a two address. For example, uh, we call uh, this is a ROM design and it has a dual address and uh, dual data. And uh, uh, what is implied here is and it is also synchronous that means to say we, uh, it is also pipelined and uh, we need naturally a clock as the uh, one of the inputs and uh, two addresses are there. So, that we may um, uh, fetch two locations it can be very same location or different locations, but the number of locations that you have is actually decided by the uh, number of bits in the address. Here in this case it is 3 bits here, therefore this ROM contains uh, 8 uh, locations totally and each of these locations is 64 bits in width and uh, corresponding uh, data that you need to uh, read from the ROM table uh, is um, D out 1 if the address 1 is. Um, uh, uh, applied at the inputs. Uh, likewise, uh, for address 2, you need to get uh, data out here, uh, which is also 64 bits in width. And uh, note that the ROM content is only single, and uh, what all you have here inside this 8 into 64 uh, bit organization of ROM, and uh, contents um, uh, is just one block as such, but the two addresses are involved here. In other words, we need to access. Um, two different locations simultaneously that is the implication here and uh, this arises in one of the design applications uh, called um, discrete cosine transform and quantization. This is for used in uh, JPEG, MPEG 1, uh, MPEG 2 video compression and uh, we will see this design application later and uh, 
for that we need this design and uh, likewise uh, other designs that we are going to consider such as uh, a single address ROM or uh, dual RAM, dual redundant uh, RAM etcetera which we are going to consider uh, will also be used in the um, uh, same application. And uh, let us see how the design flows and uh, here in uh, DCTQ we have what is known as a cosine term and uh, you need a ROM for storing such cosine values and that is why the C is put here and uh, we also need a transpose of the uh, uh, this uh, constants uh, which are uh, put into the ROM and they are basically cosine terms and uh, uh, we need to uh, get a transpose of this uh, it is basically a matrix say um, uh, and we need to get a transpose and um, uh, uh, this can be got by changing the address um, from address 1 to address 2. So, you can uh, if you want C you just uh, address uh, use only address 1 and uh, use address 2 if you want it is transpose and that is the reason why we have dual address uh, uh, design and this is uh, note that this is not a conventional approach. So, any other uh, design would have only a single address and a single uh, output either uh, 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 64 bits or uh, 8 bits and so on. Let us go into the uh, design of this. So, this is the comment here a group comment is put in this fashion and uh, these are all bulletin here I will just read out for your understanding. This is the ROM that stores the cosine and C and C T matrices. In fact, uh, what we need is only a C and C T, but uh, for uh, manipulation of scaling uh, the final uh, pixel value etcetera in the DCTQ, uh, we need a multiplication by a factor of 2 and um, that being uh, uh, one time affair why not we integrate that constant I mean multiplication also right in this cosine value and the, uh, the result is we uh, put a um, ROM with uh, twice the contents that we really require because this is what we really need while processing further in uh, DCT quantization. And uh, next point is two stage pipelining for this C and uh, CT to keep pace with dual RAM used in the DCTQ design. So, in this case um, uh, we uh, have another um, uh, specialized memory called uh, dual RAM we will go into the design of this as well later on for use in the same uh, application here and uh, uh, mentioned here as DCTQ and uh, in this dual RAM we um, uh, need to have um, two stage pipelining that means to say the output is delayed by uh, one um, uh, clock. So, whereas in this ROM it would be uh, enough if you just get the output uh, with single pipelining and uh, in order to keep pace with the dual RAM we need to delay this output of ROM and that is the reason why we are having two stage pipelining. And uh, third point is the uh, ROM size is 18 to 64 bits as I already mentioned and two locations can be accessed and output to the data bus D out 1 and D out 2 simultaneously these are all the data bus here and uh, using the two addresses address 1 and address 2 respectively. The comment ends here and uh, actual uh, code starts here the Verilog code for the uh, ROM uh, which is um, and to retrieve C and C T matrices uh, is shown here and we need to declare that uh, design and we will name it as ROM C, C T is also implied if you want you can put C T here it does not really matter and uh, we need to say module and finally, uh, towards the end there must be an end module as well and uh, we have already seen that there are um, three uh, inputs one is a clock input other, uh, other two are address inputs as you have already seen and uh, corresponding output that you want to retrieve from the ROM is D out 1 and D out 2 both naturally are outputs and uh, they are 64 bits in width that is what is shown here 63 through 0 and uh, as usual M must be is written first and L S P last and separated by a colon and uh, similarly the input also has its um, width here in this case there are only 8 into 64 bits. So, this 8, uh, 8 corresponds to 3 bits here as the address. Uh, during the next few lines we will see what this D out 1 next is uh, for the time being uh, I will just mention that this is a combinational uh, um, uh, signal and therefore, uh, but it is coming within an always block 
and therefore we need to uh, declare it as reg and not as wire and uh, only in assign statements uh, uh, you need to use um, uh, a wire there. So, here it once again this is same as the data out one these are all intermediate uh, results stored and uh, it is not really stored uh, uh, in a way it is stored because we use a reg here and in always block and uh, this is the next value that will be loaded into d out one reg one. So, as I mentioned there are uh, two pipeline stages in the first pipeline stage when the clock strikes at uh, that is at the positive edge of the clock uh, this d out reg one will uh, get the content of d out one next and in the next clock pulse that is the second line of I mean uh, pipeline stage you will get the final output itself which is the desired output that is d out one and d out two. Uh, based upon what address is contained in address 1 and address 2 which we have already seen here and uh, this we have already covered and they are all um, uh, they are all uh, basically registers here and this one is although it is a combinational signal uh, because it is put in the always block we have to declare it as reg as we have seen before and in addition to this we are also going to use uh, corresponding to 8 locations we have seen that the memory contains 8 different locations each of uh, which is 64 bits. So, we need to declare those locations as well and they are named as uh, uh, LOC 0 through LOC 7 and each uh, bit size bits is mentioned here 63 colon 0 64 bits and they are all using uh, assigned statements. So, we need to uh, declare them as wire here. We have mentioned that uh, this ROM is uh, uh, the, um, uh, what we are implementing is only a ROM and which contains two times the cosine uh, matrix as well as uh, or two times uh, the transpose of the matrix both imply uh, the same contents. So, the contents of the ROM is uh, precisely what you see here and the very first uh, location is here and the MSB is this one the 5B here and total width is 64 bit and therefore, it is declared in this fashion it is straight away represented in hex decimal and uh, we have uh, used assigned statements here and uh, that is the reason why we declared all this uh, LOC as wire here and uh, so we need to this is only a combinational uh, logic portion here and uh, whenever this location uh, changes only then we need to uh, make the assignment and while doing the assignment we will use the case because what, what all we want to do is uh, read out from one of the locations the each of the location is 64 bit which is a ROM content and uh, depending upon the address that we supply whether the uh, address is uh, ADDR1 or ADDR2 which is to follow this and uh, depending upon the actual address value which is 3 bits here and this is binary and uh, 0, 0, 0 corresponds to the location 0. So, that is being read and uh, put into d out 1 next and so is the case for all other locations uh, it all depends upon uh, what address we encounter and uh, note that only one address can come at a time. So, it will be one of this that will be processed not all of them uh, and uh, that was for address 1 and there is also a default in order to cover uh, uh, do not cares or um, uh, tri state and um, once again uh, it is a dummy statement uh, at random I have um, allocated this this is um, not going to come in the uh, regular um, processing anyway, but yet we had to take care and uh, in that we started with a case. So, we had to end case here and uh, we start one more case within the same always block and this time we will have the address too and uh, this is the reason why we are uh, in a position to access and um, uh, two different datas namely data out 1 and data out 2 simultaneously because all uh, this verilog statements are in general uh, concurrent and naturally this case and that case will be concurrently that is simultaneously um, uh, processed and uh, it is exactly the same as the previous one uh, location 0 is allocated now to d out 2 instead of d out 1 because this happens to be the address 2 and uh, once again uh, only one of this uh, addresses will be uh, processed at a time and uh, whatever be the address and it will uh, process that particular uh, statement as such and uh, it will retrieve that particular location and each of these locations is 
64 bit uh, in width and once again we have a default and then an end case here and we started with a begin at uh, after always so there is an end here. So this is the first pipeline stage and uh, we need to um, use only positive edge clock note that no reset has been used here and uh, at positive edge of the clock we have already seen that uh, we have retrieved it uh, from the tab ROM table this is the ROM table we had two tables what we have already seen and these are all the contents of the ROM. So uh, whatever is the address uh, I mean in address 1 or address 2 that will be retrieved and that corresponding location will be retrieved the uh, data that is retrieved is precisely the one of this and uh, assigned to this uh, location 0 through 7 depending upon what address. depending upon the address that we give and uh, we have already mentioned that uh, simultaneously you can supply two addresses and get two datas as such. The data what we get is one I mean 64 bit uh, which we have seen just now and uh, so this is the first pipeline that we have already seen and we have just now seen uh, uh, two case statements uh, the output of which is this d out one underscore next and this is assigned to d out 1 reg 1 this is the first pipeline stage. So, earlier in the case what we have had is only a combination circuit and uh, retrieving the um, ROM data and that ROM data when a uh, positive edge clock is encountered uh, it is assigned to d out reg 1. So, this is a, once again um, an intermediate output and this will uh, take it as the input for the next clock edge this is the second pipeline. So, note that what we assign here um, uh, to reg 1 this is the actual ROM data and we assigned here this uh, two corresponds to two addresses we want to um, simultaneously access two locations that is the uh, idea here and uh, this is assigned here at uh, when the clock strikes and a positive edge of course. So, this is the final output that we have. So, d out 1 and d out 2 are the two data corresponding to the final output. So, we uh, there is a begin therefore, there is an end and there is an end module here and uh, so this is what we had here. So, this was the ROM here with two addresses and we wish to add, um, um, uh, simultaneously retrieve two locations and each of this location is uh, 8 bytes in width and uh, this is the requirement for uh, DCTQ uh, design application that is the reason why we went for an unconventional ROM implementation which is possible uh, on FPGA as well as ASIC because uh, number of I mean uh, chip area is not too much here in this case. If the chip area is uh, uh, increases uh, um, of the order of several kilobytes uh, still you can accommodate in uh, high capacity FPGAs but there is a limit for all this and even in ASIC you will have problem because later on we will learn while uh, designing dual RAM that uh, there is a statement uh, which invokes um, uh, register arrays that is a register is nothing but a flip flop. So, those are invoked so fundamentally they are all flip flops. So, there is a limit uh, both in FPGA as well as ASIC design in ASIC however um, uh, there are specialized vendors who have uh, um, uh, design ample design experience on uh, custom built uh, memories such uh, vendors IP cores can be bought and integrated in into your design if your um, design requires uh, either the conventional uh, uh, RAM or ROM or uh, uh, or uh, tailor made uh, custom built for your application. So, in FPGA we have this uh, more uh, limitation because we cannot go beyond several uh, tens of kilobytes uh, of memory and um, so this fortunately is not much 8 into 64 bits only are uh, being used and that is the reason why we have gone for this coding and uh, so let us see the test bench now. So, the code is quite simple here. So, this is the test bench for testing this uh, dual address uh, ROM design which we have just now covered and once again we have a clock operating at 100 megahertz that is why we put a 5 here 
and uh, this is a back annotated file and the corresponding back annotated uh, waveforms also you will be seeing shortly and uh, that is why we have included uh, rom c back annotated uh, dot v file which is precisely the same as rom c dot v uh, except that this has been obtained after back annotation. And uh, the test module is rom c underscore test that is why we have to declare it here and uh, here in what all we are interested is only the uh, data outputs and uh, which is declared here and uh, inputs in test bench as I mentioned will have to be declared as reg, uh, registers reg and uh, now we invoke the design rom c here and uh, module is still rom c even uh, back annotator file if you see open it out uh, you will see the same very same module name which we have used in our design and uh, this is the instantiation if you want to call many more times you can just change this one and uh, once again uh, uh, port name uh, we are using and uh, so that we can put it in any order and these are all the inputs here clock and uh, they are all synchronous ROM here and uh, two addresses are there and uh, as inputs and corresponding outputs manifest in D out 1 uh, and uh, D out 2 respectively. And uh, being a test bench we will have to take appropriate action with reference to time and uh, we can use the initial statement. Uh, there will be a begin and corresponding end will be there towards the end and uh, we need to initialize the clock and uh, here we have two addresses. So, what we will do is we keep on changing at different points of time the addresses to start with address 1 and address 2 are initialized to different values. For example, this is 0 and this is 7th location this corresponds to location 0 and uh, this is uh, location 7 uh, that means to say when we uh, suppose uh, when you uh, uh, process this you can access location 0 as well as location 7 simultaneously and get it at the outputs d out 1 and d out 2 respectively that is the implication here and this is deliberately done to I mean uh, I mean uh, different addresses are given here. So, that you will get a feel of it uh, when we see the waveform and uh, here uh, I just tagged the address bit by um, 7 nanoseconds in order to avoid the very first clock and uh, first clock uh, edge happens at 5 nanoseconds because uh, 0 starts right at 0 time and uh, so I, I want to uh, just I wanted to avoid uh, first clock and uh, so that and uh, remember that we have two stage of pipelining. So uh, that means to say the data can manifest uh, only at the third clock so that is the implication there. And uh, that is the reason why we want uh, we have staggered a bit so that uh, clock um, uh, there is an offset between the address change and uh, uh, between the clock edge. Clock edge occurs at 5 nanosecond and uh, we are uh, we want to avoid that first clock. So, we are uh, delaying a bit here that is the uh, implication there. And uh, every time you see here uh, we apply two addresses address 1 and address 2 uh, 1 we will start with applying 0 then uh, for address to 7 and uh, keep going for every 10 nanoseconds we have a 100 megahertz operating frequency. So, every 10 nanoseconds we keep changing the address and corresponding data should manifest which we can observe in the waveform. And uh, here instead of uh, binary you can also use a decimal here in which case you need to use D here and say straight away use 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. And uh, here you notice that uh, all are uh, incremented as far as address 1 is concerned by 1 0 1 2 3 and so on and uh, whereas address 2 goes the other way 7 6 5 and so on. This happens every 10 nanosecond and finally uh, when you are done you stop give some cushion and then stop here and there was a begin therefore there is an end and uh, as usual we need to toggle the clock <coughs> this is the uh, standard statement we have been using all through that is with the always statement here and uh, this data was 5 therefore uh, 10 nanoseconds is a time period therefore 100 megahertz. We started with a module for the test bench therefore there must be an uh, end module. And uh, before we go into the synopsis result let us have a look at the waveform for this here. So, I will uh, first explain this and then zoom and uh, here what we have is a clock here and you can see the waveform of the clock and uh, address 1 is here and corresponding data out 1 is mentioned here 
and uh, address to you have a question yes this is an interesting question what if uh, the same location is accessed by both the addresses uh, there is no problem as I mentioned that can be uh, the uh, address can be uh, very same thing right. So, I have kept it deliberately different thing just to get a feel that uh, different addresses are working. So, you can repeat the same exercise uh, by using the very same address right. So, and I have cross checked that also that also works fine there is no problem because the uh, statements are very plain very large statements are straight away case. So, there is a uh, one to one uh, correspondence. And uh, notice this one as I mentioned there is a clock here rising at uh, 5 nanosecond this is 20 nanosecond therefore, this 10 and uh, when you uh, uh, this is midway here. So, this is 5 nanoseconds off time then 5 so that is what uh, the clock is 100 megahertz. So, it should amount I mean, amount to 10 nanoseconds and uh, we are, um, apply the address right here uh, actually. Uh, uh, at 7 nanoseconds only we apply and by default this uh, simulator has uh, uh, I think uh, clearing it does all by itself. So, that may be the reason why it is like that, uh, but it is not really true because 7 is also coming here and uh, this is little uh, inexplicable because we have given at 7 nanoseconds only if you remember uh, right the test bench. Uh, and let us see uh, no uh, 7 nanoseconds we are uh, writing the same information once again see address 1 address 2 0 and 7 are already done at 0 nanosecond right. So, you have to take care uh, just always uh, verify cross check then you will see uh, what the reason is and uh, so that explains why it is 0 and 7 here and uh, actually um, we actually start only after 7 nanoseconds. So, uh, and uh, uh, after uh, 17 nanoseconds only so the um, address will be changed that is the meaning there because as per the this one we are changing at 7 the cumulative time if you take 7 plus uh, 10 17 nanoseconds only we apply the second address here and that is what is happening here this this address is happening here. So, uh, you should not take this as the first clock that is what I am trying to impress upon you. So, the first clock actually is this one and uh, second clock is this and now let us see <coughs> where the output is D out 1 corresponds to the address 1 and as I mentioned it is a two stage pipelining. So, it should manifest the result must manifest only after the end of two clock pulses not counting this first one. So, the first one happens here then second here <coughs> then uh, third one is going to occur here, but uh, the data is uh, stable right here. So, the corresponding data here is uh, if you read here it is 5 b all 5 b is here. So, let us see the table here. So, just remember 5 b here and similarly address 2 is 7 and corresponding data is uh, what you see here as uh, 19 b 9 and so on. So, it is precisely at this point of time 37,000 picosecond is 39, 37 nanosecond right at this point of time where the cursor is. And uh, here you, you just remember this at least few numbers here all 5 b's here and uh, 1 9 b 9 some 4 7 e 7 and uh, let us see what we have given here. In the design if you go So, this is the data that we have given. So, you remember 5 b 5 b etcetera and uh, other one was 1 9 b 9 is not it 4 7 e 7. So, so location 7 is this one location 0 is this one. So, uh, I think that is what we have been looking at. So, d out 1 is corresponding to address 1 which is 0. So, the, uh, 0 address data is received only after 2 clock pulses delay. So, because of the pipelining here. And uh, so, you are uh, there are two crowded so many uh, uh, hexadecimal 8 bytes are there. So, you cannot obviously show all of them therefore, I just clicked on the cursor and that cursor data is being displayed here which is adequate here. And uh, note that already the address has gone quite ahead because of the pipelining right. 
and uh, remember this data is for 0 address and so is the case for uh, address 7 the data corresponding data is 19 that is what we ha had this was the very first location there location 0 content and location 7 content corresponding to the two addresses 0 and 7 and uh, so this is corresponding to uh, next few uh, address 1 has advanced further I have expanded this um, clock here little more and uh, what you see here is and uh, the cursor is at this position. So, it is 7 e 6 a and so on it is precisely the same here and this is corresponding to what address this is uh, little uh, uh, this was 5 b. So, that was the first location. So, this location must correspond to the second one uh, uh, that is address 1 here and this must be, this was 7th location now this must correspond to 6. So, uh, if you can remember this fine 7 e here then 3 1 here let us see the contents here 3 1 is here 7 is here right 7 e then 3 1. So, location 1 and 6 that is what you wanted is it are we right. So, that is what we have uh, let me zoom a bit uh, so that you can see very clearly. So, this is address 1 and uh, of course, address you cannot view because uh, of the pipelining and this is the data that you have there and uh, this is the first data and this is the second data. So, location 1 this is corresponding to address 1. So, you should have this is the data. Notice that the data is changing at uh, too many places right. So, hence the uh, this is uh, because in our design we have uh, uh, put so many intermediate stages. So, you can probably um, uh, attempt rewriting uh, redesigning uh, whether to improve this. So, that uh, uh, frequency operation can be jacked up or not you can try I am not assuring that uh, better solution may emerge, but you can try. Uh, in fact, I did not uh, try other uh, means because uh, the frequency was already met and uh, that is the reason why data is changing and uh, ultimately it will uh, get st stable here and uh, that will happen before the uh, clock positive edge of the clock. You can see that positive edge of the clock happens here it is right on the uh, uh, brink, but still it is safe right. And similarly, the other data, but we have seen this is corresponding to location 6. So, just remember 7 e 8 2 here 3 1 3 1. So, 3 1 3 1 7 e 8 2 that is what we had 7 e corresponds to location 1. So, we have not uh, mixed it up right and uh, so this is what we have seen we will see one more waveform here and I uh, will zoom this. So, once again we will uh, see look at uh, D out 1 and D out 2 this, uh, this data is 3 1 3 1 which is uh, the same just overlapped. So, that you can view and uh, next data is here you see that this is the positive edge of the clock. So, it is uh, expanded so here. So, uh, the next edge of the clock at this edge this uh, data was valid and uh, this search this data. So, we have two datas here let us see where it corresponds to in the round table. So, one is this is 5 b all 5 b's and this is 1 9 b 9 etcetera. So, So, 1 9 b 9 etcetera 5 b. So, it is addressing location 0 and location 7. So, address 1 is location 7 now here is that correct and uh, this has come down to location 0. So, and because of the pipelining this addresses are advanced further advanced. 
So, do not view the addresses, just take the data along and we have seen this as well. Okay. So, we will just look at the simplify results and what it has to show, let us see. This is the test bench we have already covered, the synopsis results. Uh, you see that it is a quite a high uh, frequency of operation we have reported um, and uh, here. And we have mapped onto a device which we are uh, probably going to use our uh, DCT design on this same uh, device. So, hereafter all the designs uh, which pertain to only the DCTQ application and uh, such as arithmetic circuits and dual RAMs etcetera. And uh, we will use this very same uh, uh, device with the uh, uh, possibly highest speed available and it is a 240 pin package and it is a vertex C combination and it reports different uh, flip flops usage how many and uh, input buffers, output buffers all that. And uh, finally, it reports uh, LUT of just 68 for this ROM application and uh, Xilinx place and routes uh, reports and these are all the slices 4 input LUT is used here and uh, the 2 of interest will be around uh, 2000 gates is a um, standardized to 2 input NAND gate. So, uh, it is a gate equivalent this particular design for uh, dual address and in addition to that you need uh, additional gates if you want a JTAG compliant uh, IOS. And here you see that the frequency of operation has come down after uh, place and uh, route here. So, but still it is good enough. But once again as I mentioned what counts is the total um, system speed not merely the individual modules. It is only uh, um, as an academic interest we are looking at these figures. And it also creates a ROM C dot bit for uh, downloading into a hardware. And next we will consider one more design. Uh, this appears to be a conventional uh, design. This is also used in DCT uh, quantization. And this is used as a quantization table. So, in uh, quantization we need to carry out uh, division not multiplication ultimately from after getting DCT uh, which is the transform. And um, but uh, uh, division can also be um, uh, implemented as um, uh, multiplication if you just invert the quantization value. So, what is stored in this ROM table is the inverse of quantization and uh, what is stored here is actually once again in 64 bits. But uh, when we want to retrieve it, we want to retrieve one byte at a time although it is 8 by 64 uh, organization. So, we want to retrieve as uh, in a byte oriented manner and this is uh, um, off from the conventional design and that is why hence uh, we need to write a code for that. And uh, mind you it is a 64 uh, bytes totally, uh, eight, uh, each is 8 bytes. So, like that 8 locations, so 64 bytes totally. So, naturally you, it calls for an address of that size 6 bits here, 2 to the power of 6 will give you so many location. And uh, the design starts here, I will just read out the comments here. This ROM shows the inverse of quantization values 8 bits unsigned. So, quantization value is, uh, um, uh, it is an inverse of quantization value as I mentioned before and uh, although it is organized as 8 by 64 bits, it is byte address uh, while reading. So, while reading only that is uh, byte address and uh, retrieved as a byte and processed further because for uh, we need to divide a DCT value which will emerge at every clock pulse and uh, there are 64 coefficients in that and each coefficient will have to be uh, divided by this quantized value in order to get a quantized uh, DCT. And that is what uh, brings about compression which we will see in greater depth later on when we uh, talk of the design application. And uh, here the uh, design module is quantization, so it is uh, Q is annexed here for ROM. So, it is called ROM Q module and it has two inputs, one address which we have already seen it, uh, is a width is 6 bits and its data is uh, 8 bits here and we declare the input outputs here. And uh, this is a register we will be using uh, in pipeline stage once again here also. And uh, 
So, uh, data will be in the uh, always uh, positive edge um, uh, block therefore, it is reg here and we also need an intermediate um, assigned value which we will declare as wire here and that is precisely same as d here it is an intermediate value uh, to store the data. And now uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, memory can be realized by uh, as a flip flop array. So, you can uh, just by one statement you can declare uh, any size uh, memory for example, uh, this has uh, note with car here. So, it is declared as reg here and uh, you give the width here. So, if it is 64 bit you want uh, a memory uh, which is 8 into 64. So, that 64 bit width is specified first and um, uh, you can declare uh, you can give a name for the memory. For example, I have given it as MEM if you want um, call it as uh, something else say RAM or ROM or whatever you can call uh, any name any meaningful name you can give for your memory. And uh, these are all the uh, locations say so, number of locations are 8. So, location 0 through location 7 we have tackled earlier in the same fashion and this one is the highest order address. So, location 7. So, this is the nomenclature even here first MSB then followed by the LSB here. So, this is a, a, a typical uh, memory realization this is an important thing we should uh, remember for any memory realization you can use an array of this type. And similarly one more array also has been used and uh, ROM is organized as 8 by 64 bits and uh, but read byte by byte right. So, in order to assist uh, bifurcating this um, word into bytes we need one more here array here and that is what is declared here. And uh, in addition to this we need some more um, uh, 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 signal for example, memory data this also is uh, 64 bits and there uh, they uh, I mean it is a combinational output. So, we declare it as wire here. So, also we need location 0 through 7 as in the previous case each of which is of the same bits 64 bits and they are all wire and that is because we are going to uh, use assign statement here. And as before we have exactly the same only uh, difference is data is different here. So, these are all the inverse, inverse quantization values uh, showed in the ROM table and as I mentioned here it is 8 number of locations each is 64. So, the organization is 8 into 64 as far as the storing is concerned is a being a ROM it is only storing device. So, while retrieving we want to retrieve for locate I mean uh, we have 6 bit address. So, when we give address 0 we want to re retrieve FF first. So, for uh, address 1 we want to retrieve 8 0 and so on for this 7 address 7 3 C will be retrieved then uh, 8 0 will be retrieved at uh, 8 address and so on uh, in a raster scan order you can just um, address that. And finally, for 63 address in decimal 1 9 will be uh, used When we see the waveform we will compare uh, come back to this and see the and once again this is a combinational um, always block and uh, whenever that locations change only then we need to take the uh, do the processing and what we are doing here is uh, we have used regmem array earlier and um, so this is the way to retrieve a particular memory location. Those who are familiar about uh, microprocessor and their RAM design uh, will follow it very uh, I mean readily. So, when you say memory the address you give here within the codes. So, straight away that uh, it will go to that location uh, take the 0 as the address and retrieve whatever is stored in that 0 location and uh, um, uh, in fact, it is the other way it goes to the location 0 here because it is a ROM we want to read from the ROM location 0 is nothing other than the data that we have already stored that is retrieved as um, uh, memory 0. So, this is done so that um, address can be varied later on. So, we will go into the details a little later. So, what uh, precisely it means it will be clear when we deal with that later on. So, now uh, the comment says here bytes from each row accessed in raster scan order must be first we have already seen that FF was the first one that, uh, that is access first. And uh, so, this is the flexibility in uh, writing Verilog code. So, suppose you are not happy with uh, must be first you want some other thing to be retrieved first 
you can always write a code to change to your particular uh, uh, custom design. So, that is the beauty of uh, wedlock coding here. And uh, so, we have one more uh, always block and this time another variable is used memory data and uh, notice that memory data is byte access here. For example, 63 to 56 if you subtract this you get 7, so plus 1, so 8 bits totally. So, uh, in this order lower order uh, bits are assigned to different uh, byte data 0 and so on. So, this is only to facilitate uh, change of uh, uh, 64 bit into uh, 8 bit uh, notation. So, that is what we have here. So, what uh, here it will be uh, plain. So, we have used memory data earlier and uh, we, um, we have also used memory that uh, within brackets the address. So, here we can straight away uh, define the address this uh, MSB of the address we had taken here 3, 4, 5 and uh, that particular thing will fetch this uh, memory data. Memory data is nothing other than what we have here. So, it is clearly a, only a byte is being fetched here memory data here right and uh, that is fetched from the address pointing to the MSB of that and MS, uh, LSB of the address will fetch the byte data. So, this byte data then give the address this is in fact this is the byte data here and uh, uh, memory is what we have. So, when we say memory data, so what it implies here let us see have a look. Actually we say memory data it actually implies all the 64 bits it does not mean this right this is there only to uh, uh, in fact reassigned as a byte data here we are separating out a 64 bit content as a byte content here right is it clear. In fact, you can see memory data having declared earlier somewhere. Memory data as I mentioned this is actually 64 bit and uh, data byte is to uh, get only one byte at a time and that is what it is there that is what we have seen here. So, that is what these two sta statements are doing. So, you retrieve the byte data and uh, first from the uh, one complete uh, uh, 8 byte location as such and uh, what we this is single pipeline here and uh, this uh, D next is nothing other than the actual uh, retrieved byte data corresponding to address A which is some total of all the bits 5 through 0 from you had to see together these statements then only it will become clear that it is address completely 0 through 5 like address. So, and which outcomes the outcome will be a one byte as such that is what we have here and this is ad, uh, this byte which we have read correspond to uh, A address is assigned to D here and uh, we end up this and finally, the module is also ended. So, this is the test bench for testing the ROM and uh, as usual this are all the include statements and this uh, ROM queue test here here what we need is only a D output here and we declare as output here being only a one byte and uh, we need to have uh, inputs declared as reg. So, we have it here and we instantiate the design invoke the design and instantiate and uh, port uh, by name and uh, note the uh, an interesting thing here we are using one uh, um, count as an integer we are declaring this is exactly a C like structure it is precisely the C program uh, exact counterpart of C program. I mentioned that in RTL coding we should avoid all this, but we are doing um, using this only in the test bench. So, if you had you use this statement for for example, for statement is used which is precisely a street C statement and for count equal to 0 and for count less than 64. So, uh, every time you count advance the counter. So, what we need to do is and uh, assign this count to the address here that is what this uh, for loop is doing this is exactly uh, counterpart of C and this is a violation of RTL guidelines and you should not use this in the design you should you can use uh, in the test bench because it uh, gives a much concise pro, uh, uh, code coding you can call it programming at, uh, for the test bench, but it is a pseudo thing we can uh, sometimes we have also um, used 
uh, RTL um, coding style here although it is not really required. So we can violate in the test bench but not in the design. This should be very clearly borne in mind. I think I have been mentioning this uh, right from my uh, day one when we started the wedlock coding. And uh, once uh, um, uh, having covered all these 64 uh, addresses, we need to give a little more allowance and then stop here. And uh, as usual, this clock is running at 100 megahertz with this statement and there is an end module here and uh, the results are here. Uh, it is uh, running at 123 megahertz here and prior to this let us have the waveform here. So uh, remember that there is one uh, um, 7 nanoseconds in test bench here also as in the previous example that is why um, address is applied from uh, uh, 7 nanoseconds here. And uh, so there is a clock here there is a uh, this is the data out and this count is also displayed here. So it, you notice that it keeps on advancing. Uh, this is to facilitate uh, supplying address here. In fact, this is uh, same thing is being applied here and uh, this is synchronous and with one pipelining. So, the output comes delayed after this you can see here. This is the clock which is responsible for this um, retrieving the data corresponding to 0 address and the data is FF. You remember that we started with that uh, earlier FF80 that is precisely what you have here. So, you can just zoom. So, you can see FF80 and so on, all right. And uh, notice that this is the clock which is responsible, but it comes only after gate delay because we are using a back annotation here. And uh, FF8066C and uh, second waveform you can see here, they are all towards the end. This is 6263, 251E19, etc. So, if you see the content here you can see FF80 and uh, last one 1E19 one you can see that. So, you can see uh, 2D25 1E19. So, this is also can zoom. So, you can see this 25 2E19. So, this establishes the working of the design and uh, finally, uh, we will have a look at the these are all the simplified results we have seen here. It is works at 123 megahertz and uh, corresponding uh, and we have used the very same device that we have mentioned before and uh, it has taken just 37 LUTs for this design. Uh, and uh, place and route result is 319 gates here and uh, ram q dot bit is the output and uh, it operates at 152 megahertz. Okay, thank you.